Yeah, yeah. No, actually, I think more than 10. They were not in uniform and then they surrounded the place and uh, were asking for Susu. He said, I should bring him out. And I said, he's ministering. So when it's done, then we know what to do. They keep pressing, pressing that they are here to take him to the police headquarters. So I asked them to produce their, uh, how do you call it, warrant. They couldn't produce it. I asked them to wait. When we close, then they can take him. So when he finished ministering, then uh, I took over to pray for him and the church. Yeah. So after that, uh, it's like the members, some people in this constituency also came around and then lots of people and some minor confusion outside because I'm inside preaching, so you know. So then finally, uh, some officers came from the constituency together with uh, his party executives and then uh, he waved at me that he's going to come. That's all. Joining us is Director of Public Affairs of the Ghana Police Service, Superintendent Alexander Obin. Thank you for joining us, uh, Superintendent. So many have raised questions about the back and forth between the police, parliament, the MP and his constituents. From where you sit as the police, exactly what is Mr. Francis Xavier Susu wanted for? Uh, thank you very much. And um, afternoon to viewers and listeners. Uh, I think uh, the, uh, the release uh, from Ghana Police Service Public Affairs Directorate. In the investigation released to violation of certain aspects of our Public Order Act 491 of 1994. And those details have been spelled out. And persons that we suspect, some have been interrogated. And we are also seeking for uh, others to be forthcoming. And as a result of that, we are exhausting all the public processes that allows uh, investigation or investigative teams to have access to persons that can support our investigation of certain specified cases. Okay. Uh, and it is that reason why uh, we have also stated in our release that using all available legal uh, conduit in order for all to be forthcoming, because violating Act 491 is also a very serious matter and we must treat it as such. Okay. But, Superintendent, you also know that per Articles 117 and 118 of the same constitution, the Member of Parliament who is on his way or returning from Parliament has some form of immunity against arrest. The Speaker made that clear to you in that letter to the police. Why are you still persistent to pick him up by what we saw yesterday at the church premises? I think we have emphasized that uh, whatever that was circulating was untrue in terms of arrest. What we have done, and we have indicated to the general public that whatever means that exists for us within the, uh, the law, we will exhaust it so that uh, we will be forthcoming with uh, uh, his involvement in the issue that occurred a week ago. Okay. So we heard from the founder of a church uh, where Francis Xavier Sosu was preaching on Sunday. He was clear. He said the individuals who came to the premises, when he questioned them, said they were police officials from the CID. You're saying you did not dispatch any officials from the CID to go to that church yesterday? And you emphasize it again. That the fact in issue, we will not be uh, sweet from it. Okay. That we have a public order act that regulates public institutions and all that, and reposes responsibilities on organizers and active participants, and also on police to provide the necessary security to ensure the protection of public health and facilities. And in this particular case, what the law says people shouldn't do, it happened that people obstructed public way okay. and then started burning the 
public rules that we have to serve Ghanaians, among other issues that happened. And it's in light of this that the CID is conducting this investigation in order to ensure that the law is complied with. And in this light, all that it, uh, we have to ensure mm. that people comply with basic rules of engagement under the Constitution, okay. the service will ensure that that is exacted. Okay. And that's exactly what we need. The other issue regarding uh, our mode of arrest and all that, that well, we have issued press treatment on that. And uh, want us to go back on back and forth. What is this that the visitor is conducting investigation that will ensure that persons that are being investigated are right are not violated. Okay. Uh, uh, proper evidence are due if any. And then we proceed to court. That okay. is what is important. Before I let you go, before I let you go, Supo, the um, Parliament says they have invited you to appear before the Privileges Committee. Are you going to show up? I think that we leave that one uh, uh, to the administration. But what I'm saying is that it is obvious that the Public Order Act was violated. Okay. And I pray that the Nians will also apprise their minds to it that our public species are also areas that others have access at all times. And therefore, any how we may we make in Ghana. Okay. Such places are protected. And that is why in the public order act, it is stated claim that if you want to co convey to demonstrate, bring persons on the road as demonstrated and on processions among others. You do it in conjunction with the local police to ensure that all are protected to ensure that public goods are protected so that your demonstration will not extend to violating the people's okay. right to movement. All right. That is for again, that right. in the process of demonstrating, mm. your activity will not also harm public properties and public property. Yes, oh, we must all right. Bear in mind. All right, Super. I know I said that was my final question, but this is my final question. Any updates on the interdiction? of a bodyguard of the MP, you had said in your statement yesterday that Parliament's unit is going to dispatch or uh, task another guard to go to the MP and provide those duties. Has that been done? Hello, Supo. I think we have lost Superintendent Alexander Obin there on the line. He is the Director in Charge of Police Public Affairs, speaking to us on the matters arising between the Member of Parliament for Medina, Francis Xavier Sosu. Parliament, on the other hand, and the constituents of our area who staged a protest sometime last week over poor roads. Well, we now know a police inquiry is underway as the service interdicts the bodyguard of the MP, Francis Xavier Sosu, charging him for obstructing the arrest of the MP during last Monday's protest against the bad rules. Inspector Daniel Agbavo has been asked to submit all equipment in his custody to the police as the service conducts a probe into the matter. Let's get a lot more on, on this because now, according to that statement by the police, Inspector Agbavo allegedly recklessly drove into a crowd after the protest. That was sometime last week. And now the statement says the action of a guard directly endangered the lives of people who were part of a protest and then some senior officers who were around the enclave during the protest. Now, the officers reported the incident to the police for some disciplinary action, and then the Parliamentary Protection Unit of the police has since been taxed to dispatch another police officer to the MP to provide guard duties after the one in question who is alleged to have breached the law in terms of all the events that happened during the protest has been interdicted. All the accoutrements in his custody have also been submitted to the Parliament Police. I was trying to find out from Superintendent Alexander Obing if, as we speak this afternoon, a police guard has been assigned to the MP, but unfortunately we lost him there. That's an area we are going to be establishing for you if you stay with us here on TV3. Meanwhile, the Member of Parliament for Ningo Pram Pram Sam George in a Facebook post has questioned the presence of the national security operatives and the police personnel at the church premises of his colleague MP in a Facebook post which will be displaying shortly. He says, who are the police officers at the church premises at Ridge Junction in Medina seeking to arrest the MP, he asks. Now, he says, is the IGP aware of this order and what it means in the face of Mr. Speaker's directives? 
And by that, he's making reference to the directives of the speaker sometime last week in that response to the police declining an invitation for the police. So he goes ahead to say, so why is the Ghana Police Service disregarding that directive from the speaker on the intention to arrest the Honorable MP for Medina, Francis Xavier Susu? But then there's been some reaction from some lawyers, you know, on this particular matter of either uh, and a member of parliament can be arrested whether he is on his way to parliament or away from parliament. A law professor, the dean of students at the University for Professional Studies, Professor Kofi Abuchi, says the police are not duty bound to inform or seek the permission of a speaker before effecting an arrest of an MP. The authority of a police to arrest extends to everyone except the president. And so an MP can only evade an arrest if he is on his way to or on his way from Parliament. So those are the dynamics that are playing out on this particular matter. We also know that the constitutional provisions are clear on this Article 117, which is a civil or criminal process coming from any court or place out of Parliament shall not be served on or executed in relation to the Speaker or a member or the clerk to Parliament while he is on his way to attending at or returning from any proceedings of Parliament.